previously on TV Sins. I call him Girder. Meet more. See. Reading. What are we now, Gareth? Glorified red shirts? How dumb are Rick and company not to think that the Terminus cannibals didn't have a contingency plan for people trying to attack them when they opened that compartment? Based on what I've seen, the idea that Rick has kept this many people alive for this long is crazier than the idea of a zombie apocalypse. Also, you're just now looking up. I get that as an audience, we don't know where that sound was coming from, but you should have known that immediately. Also, also, since the Terminus endgame is to kill and eat these people, then why not just kill them all here, instead of taking the chance of a successful revolt on the way to the slaughter trough? Eli Roth's The Walking Dead. Totally get the need for labeling your human parts containers, but would you really take the time in the apocalypse to go full kinkos on your label making? Holy f***, the show knows nothing about creating suspense. The scene is way scarier if we see Rick and Daryl trying to squirm out of their mouth gag and hand ties while we hear the drilling sound in the background not knowing what that entails. Showing this is just gross and frankly silly. Also, watching this guy clean up the little bit of blood spatter while the dissection is still taking place is hilarious and doesn't seem very cost effective. No reason to do this until they're done with this body. You're just wasting cleaning solution at this point. I can't imagine that it's exactly replaceable. It's the f***ing apocalypse. Pretty sure Aunt Fanny is no longer in business. Well, I guess it's a good thing that the show regulars are really far down in the queue so that they have time to get out of it while giving the show a chance to provide the grisly violence, you sick crave. The show steals the blood down the drain shot from Psycho but refuses to shoot it in black and white and use chocolate syrup to not offend my delicate sensibilities. Hey! Your shot count? Whew! Nothing like a good fake out, and we all know this show would never kill one of our favorite characters this way. I mean, can you imagine? Also, bureaucracy ex machina. So you go into the woods with a bag and come out without it. <laughs> what was it? Was this intimidation play always the plan here? Or did he just happen to be here before they battered through the lineup and got to Rick and thought maybe he might ask? Show seems to want to have it both ways for effect, but not on my watch. That's what I'm going to use to kill you. Hero states his intention to kill their captor in a specific way, even though they are currently powerless, but we all know it's going to eventually happen exactly the way they called it, cliche. <sighs> Jeez, how many Deus Ex Swingicus can you have in one episode? This is worse than when someone in a mystery movie keeps putting the poison cup to their lips but not drinking. Just drink the poison already! Also, that gunshot made you stop what you were doing? There were two gunshots before this. <laughs> a person in panic wrote, Away with you on this wall, instead of go away or stay out. They should have just finished it, protuberance of the flesh, and completed the ridiculousness. More. Carol is supposed to be the smart one here, right? So why, when faced with an oncoming horde of sauntering walkers, does she decide to just hide and wait? You could literally outrun them by dialing up your pace to mall walker. What's this nonsense? I'd also like to take this opportunity to say that zombies should trip more. If this goo crew had the dexterity and visual acuity to clear these tracks, then shouldn't they also be able to open doors, fire guns, and give half-decent handjobs? We're friends of the chick with the sword and the kid in the hat. Who you just happened to mention at the exact moment we were sneaking up on you for full convenience points. Carol does some viscera camouflage here, but why exactly does she have to put it on her face again? Is it a visual thing? Are the zombies like, hmm, this creature smells like us, but the face looks too clean. Attack with the fiery speed of a tortoise riding a sloth through a river of molasses. Also, if this works so well, why doesn't everyone do it all the time? Do they not have the guts? I don't have any friends. I mean, I know people. They're just assholes I stay alive with. Family. It's funny how you don't even notice the time go by. Oh, I am 100% noticing the time go by, and it is the farthest thing from funny. Liar. I'm not saying Carol couldn't aim the fireworks to hit the exact spot she needed for that explosion to go off, but I am saying Carol couldn't aim the fireworks to hit that exact spot she needed for the explosion to go off. Maybe your friend. The director said, let's have your character chew gum during every scene you're in. It'll make your acting choices look like even more of an asshole. You stay here. You're, these guys aren't going anywhere. Stay here until I know what's happening. But don't kill the people that could get loose and kill you. Just let them roll around for a minute and loosen their zip ties. If you're ever being pursued by a zombie, I'm going to go ahead and suggest you not try the frantically scooching backwards while lying on your back method of escape. Stand up, man. What are you, a pill bug? Maybe Carol could fool one or two of these things, but the idea of her walking through a pack of them without a single bit of a breeze taking some of her human smell to their zombie nostrils is about the bullshit bullshit this show has had me swallow. We gotta let those people out. That's still who we are. It's gotta be. Yeah, thank God they never go against this way of thinking. It's not like they will ever sneak into a room of humans while they're sleeping and stab them all in the head. Glad that never happens. What <laughs> Ah! Rob Zombie's The Walking Dead. Convenient, perfectly placed mirror is convenient. Ah, ah sudden Tasha Yar. The signs. 
They were real. It was a sanctuary. Really? This shit? Again, Carol has not hesitated to kill anyone, and she's letting the mom from Pet Cemetery talk. Why is this scene? You're not here. Neither am I. Okay, but what about Joaquin Phoenix? Was he ever really here? We interrupt this sterile and feral Daryl reunion with Carol to ask if Carol was still in peril. Why and when, before reuniting with Daryl, did she clean up her face in apparel? You have to come with me. I'm not going to tell you that Judith is alive just yet, because it will play better if you're surprised. So instead, I'm going with a basic, you better come take a look at this cliche without any explanation whatsoever. Man, the reunions in the last three minutes of this show might seem touching to someone who actually watched the last four seasons. We'll talk to him. Not just yet. Right, because why would you give pertinent information that you had? That would be, um, batty. Since the group is now walking away from Terminus, why would the side be pointed back toward the compound instead of for approaching strangers? Rolls on Marshalls. The then bookends to this episode are some of the most useless bookends to ever book in, especially considering the only information we learn has already been fully exposited to us during the Battle of Candle Hall. To serve men, it's... it's a cookbook! Now, I'm Father O'Flanagan. I'm a man of God. And you must trust me when I say it's very likely that we're all going to die. It's not for the faint of heart. You definitely need to want to be that bitch to wear these type of shades. Hey, look at me. What? I'm the captain now. 